A very important part of studying at university is making sure that the sources of information that you use for your essays or projects are accurate and reliable. Whatever methods you use to find your information, it is worth giving the source a quick check. What I would suggest is a simple ABC of points to keep in mind whenever you approach a new source of information. This can be applied to all sorts of things, books, newspaper articles, journals and not just websites. ABC stands for Authority, Bias and Currency. Authority means finding out what qualification the author has to be giving you the information they are providing. This may be their academic qualifications or their work or life experience. Who do they work for? What have they published before? If you are buying a book, you usually have a look at the blurb on the back page or the snippets from book reviewers who have commented on the book. You can do the same thing with websites. A good website will often have an About Us link or something similar. Have a quick look there to see what it says about the organization or if there is a mission statement. Does it name the managers or the chief people working there? Does it give links to their sources of information? Bias means finding out if the website has any reason for not giving a balanced view. For example, it may belong to a political or pressure group which is campaigning for a specific cause. It may be an organization with a particular aim or purpose or which represents a particular industry or profession. There is nothing at all wrong with bias as such. Most people and organizations have their own views and objectives. What you as the student need to do is to be aware of any bias and seek out other sources of information which may give you a contrasting viewpoint so that you can consider both or all sides of an argument in your work. And currency just means how up-to-date the website is. Websites often give a date when they were last updated. Another indicator of how current a website is is whether any links it provides to other sites are still working. A page with too many dead links tells you that it's obviously not being kept up-to-date. Now let's try this out on a few websites. Imagine you need to write an essay about nuclear energy. And in the course of your search on Google, you have come across these websites, which sound as though they might be useful. We will go to the first one, the World Nuclear Association. Here we can see straight away that this is a well-organized website. It has an index, so there is likely to be plenty of information. And it has a rotating tape of news features so it appears to be well maintained and kept up to date. So that is its currency. Now let's find out some more about the organization. It has working groups working on different aspects of nuclear fuel and they give the names of the directors who can be contacted. People working at the top level of an industry like this can be expected to have a high level of expertise. So this is their authority. It has a Charter of Ethics as well, which can't be bad. Let's look at their mission statement. Here there is something which might indicate an element of bias. It is an organization which represents the global nuclear industry. So it might not be so keen to publicize any negative aspects of the industry. But apart from that proviso, I think this would be a useful source to use for my essay. Now, what do you think of this one? The name of the website sounds very promising. It's a worldwide service providing information about energy. Just what we're looking for. But have a look at the graphics and the language used. It is far from calm and objective. Further down the page, there is a section encouraging readers to join an online campaign. So this indicates that it is a campaigning organization with a specific aim in mind. So this is quite clearly a possible source of bias.
if we go to the About Wise tab, this should give us more information. And there is a mission statement which confirms that this is an organization campaigning for the total elimination of nuclear energy. But what about the authority or the quality of information provided? We can go to read some of the articles. They are all published in their own house journal, The Nuclear Monitor. Looking at the references at the end of the article, we can see that most of them appear to be to other websites of like-minded organisations or to newspapers or news organisations. Few of them appear to be links to original research sources such as academic articles or research institutes. This shows that the information is second-hand. That is not to say that it is wrong or inaccurate, but it does mean that you need to look for more authoritative sources for your information. Our third website is the Cullum Centre for Fusion Energy. This is another website which looks substantial and well organised. The first thing to notice here is the web address. It ends in .ac.uk, which means that it is an academic institution in this country, either a university or a research institute. This should give you some indication of its level of authority in the academic world. As always, we can have a quick look in the About Us tab. Here we see that the Cullum Centre is the UK's National Laboratory for Fusion Research and they are owned by the UK Atomic Energy Authority. So they clearly do their own original research, but there is a possibility of bias in that they may not be willing to present any negative aspects of the industry. If we look at some of the other tabs, for example under Fusion Energy, we see that they are keen to educate the public about fusion energy with some basic information about it. Again, scientists working at this level should know what they are talking about, so this site should have some very useful and reliable information to use in your essay. Here is a website you may already be familiar with. It's the Wikipedia entry for nuclear power. Wikipedia is an open access encyclopedia to which anyone can contribute articles. You may have been warned against using it or relying heavily on it because you have no idea whether the person writing the article knows what they are talking about or whether they have a biased standpoint. Wikipedia have thought of that. You will find that some articles, particularly those that are likely to be controversial, now have this padlock symbol. This means that the article is monitored by what they call watchers, people who have been vetted for their academic credentials in their subject and who watch out for any changes made to the article and check if they are OK. So this is some guarantee of authority. If you click on View History, you should be able to see what changes have been made to the article and when. This will give you an idea of its currency. A good encyclopedia article should give you a balanced overview of the topic, summarise any contrasting opinions or theories about it, and not be afraid to present any negative aspects of it. And, most importantly, it should give you links to the sources of information it has used. If we look at the contents of the article, and scroll down to the references at the bottom, we can see that this has been done quite thoroughly in this case. So there is nothing wrong in using Wikipedia in your research as long as you follow up some of the sources it mentions and treat it like any other source of information by doing an ABC check on it.